America loves a non-specific pedophile. You can't. Nobody's actually. You can't accuse anybody with a name of being a pedophile. A pedophile mm-hmm. is just like a, like everybody in the neighborhood knows. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, it's like the Baba Yaga. You know, it it's is. like <laughs> don't walk home alone. <laughs> right. <laughs> but then what? But then if you're like, uh. My teacher. They're like, well, no, don't no, be rude. It's not. It's nobody. It's the. Everybody, it's not anyone real. The no. only pedophile in this neighborhood is the man at the end of the street who's lived there for fifty years, who nobody's ever learned his name. That's the only <laughs> actual pedophile that exists in America. Yeah, it's, it's nobody with. A, we love stranger danger, but we hate like uh, institutional, like right. systemic pedophilia. People hate identifying the stranger as actual danger. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. I mean. Thinking about the movie uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, that's not how it would go. <laughs> no, not at all. Yeah, yeah like yeah. if Freddy Krueger was molesting kids, the parents would be like, "Don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> go, go to sleep. It'll be fine." <laughs> yeah, Jesus Christ, man! Like, <laughs> it's fuck. It's it is. <laughs> <laughs> go knock on Freddy Krueger's door, and they'd be like, "Now, will you explain to my son that nothing's wrong?" <laughs> yeah. It's also really funny in those movies that like Freddy Krueger is killing like Freddy's reasons for killing the kids are just like the movie <laughs> just because it's like yeah it's like yeah it was mob justice uh, you know Freddy was cleared in the trial so it was wrong for them to burn him to death. <laughs> 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 Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, have you ever watched Nightmare on Elm Street? The, the implication of those movies is that what the parents did was wrong, and that is why Freddy was granted powers in the Wait, afterlife. Wait, but are you, is the audience supposed to think he did it or no? It just seems, no, he did it. He oh, did, okay. That's why he likes killing kids now. But, oh, but, so, so it's like <laughs> it's like when um the cops stopped lynching because they saw it as like superseding their power? Yeah, literally, yes. <laughs> Basically, yeah, like... Those movies are fucking retarded. It, it like Freddy is supposed not to be good film. somewhat sympathetic mm-hmm. because you can't just like if a, if a guy is killing children and raping them and he gets off in court, leave him be. Yeah, he didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so Freddy look, when, he yelled "Ollie, Ollie, oxen free." <laughs> when, when Freddy Krueger died, he basically went to heaven. God was like, "I'm really sorry that happened to you." I'll tell you what. <laughs> <laughs> I will let you exist in dreams. Yeah, you can take these. You can drag all these children to hell because their parents. <laughs> <laughs> had the audio, yeah, yeah. You, <laughs> you can drag different children to hell. God's just he's it, like Freddy Krueger's up there talking to Old Testament God. He's like, dude, I get it. You wanted some twelve year old sniz. I love that. <laughs> I was all about that. Yeah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> but yeah, it's like that. You, mm-hmm. The minute the minute you're like, I wish that we could put in. Uh, beeps. I mean, like, uh, yeah, for sure. But <laughs> beeps like, like fucking like Kill Bill every time I say Steven Spielberg's name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, well, don't don't walk home from the park without your sister. It's like, yeah, I don't think Steven Spielberg is like circling the park. But some, but <laughs> dude, what did Lorez say? He like found the kids for Jurassic Park in like a doctor's waiting room. <laughs> <laughs> So fucking yeah. maybe. pedophilia. It's basically like um, a series of unfortunate events where you're like, it's Count Olaf. <laughs> He's wearing a hat. That's it. <laughs> it's like, hey, don't be mean. It's like, it couldn't possibly be Count Olaf. I've never seen him wear a hat. <laughs> that's, that's, that's like that's and yeah. and so it's like it's Brian Singer. Oh, don't say that. Dad, he's in my ass. <laughs> it's like, well, maybe you fell. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, yeah, man, I don't know. These fucking people need to go. What I was saying to mm-hmm. you before we started was, uh, do you know who made do you know who made 12 billion dollars today? Today alone? Let's hear it. Oh, the man himself, Jeff Bezos, made 12 billion dollars. If one of our listeners wants to do something about that, I <laughs> I really encourage it. What did he do to make 12 billion dollars F- today? It's fucking nothing, Brendan. Nothing. Mm-hmm. What? He took away more. He like uh, Does he make that every day? I think he makes 12 billion dollars every time he busts up a Whole Foods union. So, <laughs> so like I think that that's that's a that's a kickback that he gives to himself. <laughs> yeah. If if it was like the 1900s, I bet Jeff Bezos would like insist on leading the charge himself. Dude, absolutely, <laughs> totally. You He'd know, be like, "Let me see one of those Tommy guns. Let me get one of these miners." Do you know how that motherfucker started Amazon? Do you how? know how he got the money? He borrowed two hundred and fifty thousand dollars from his parents. <laughs> <laughs> 
He started a company. What well, a at least he idiot. looks like a lizard. Yeah. <laughs> at least we have that. At least he looks like a scary lizard man. He looks like he's having the longest stroke ever. <laughs> I was saying that to my parents. We were mm-hmm. talking. I got into like I keep having uncomfortable conversations about billionaires with my parents, mm-hmm. and I'm just like, and they were talking about like Jeff Bezos as a self-made guy. I'm like, he got two hundred fifty thousand dollars from his parents, and my parents are like, well, Nick, he had to get the money from somewhere. <laughs> you know what? You know what we would do with two hundred fifty thousand dollars? I know exactly what I would do. With $250, Live for the rest of my life. I would. Yes, <laughs> I would pay rent for my apartment every month. <laughs> yeah, you would take that money and you would live fifteen years and then die. <laughs> And that would be the most honest Christian way to use that money. Yeah, dude. Fucking. Oh, God. <laughs> this podcast is really. Um, We've really taken a it's turn. It's changed over time. Remember when it, we were like. Um, Do you remember? They were like, oh, I don't want people to think this is all right. And now we're like, <laughs> this is the anti fa podcast. I mean, <laughs> that's not how you say it. I know. This is the anti fa podcast, but also we say retard. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that, yeah, that's. <laughs> we a have been kicked out of every DSA meeting for doing black voice. <laughs> if it weren't for, I mean, look, dude, I know how much this podcast has changed because I still will periodically flash back to a specific moment in this podcast where I exasperatedly looked in your eyes and said, "But Brendan, what about the rights of the individual?" And now <laughs> I think, what a retard that guy was. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> what about we the all... rights of the individual? Well, My God! <laughs> yeah, but here the the thing is that by m- turning our lives into content, instead of being people, we become characters, right? Which then makes our redemption something that people want to see. That's very true. Yeah, no yeah, one yeah. wants to see watch their favorite TV character. Just stay shitty. Dude, if I... They're, they're rooting for us. Oh, my God. If I had been doing this personal growth over the past two years for no audience, mm-hmm. what a waste that would I know. be like. People would have been like, not good enough. That's exactly right. Yeah. Because now, now I have a document of exactly how bad I was. Yeah. I can literally... I can, I can like, cut clips together yeah, and be show like, a montage. Oh, this is... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're basically... Exactly in body type as well. Um, Zuko and Iroh from Avatar... You know what? This is the first thing that you've said that I don't actually know what you're talking about. <laughs> um, so Zuko and Iroh, is, is, is they're babe, the firebenders. They're has, the, is this, has Bay been making you watch Avatar? Yeah. Okay, I yeah. figured. Okay. I mean, it's it's good. I like it. Yeah, no, it's not bad. Yeah. Um, but the, like, the whole point is that it, it's like the arc where he slowly turns uh, good. I right. think. I have yeah. Oh, the guy yet. with the burned face. Yeah, yeah. It's classic Vegeta. That's a classic Vegeta. Classic arc, dude. Vegeta. And then I'm the I'm the fat guy who likes treats. Oh, who, the guy who's always he was like, "What are we gonna have?" He's tea? always like opining with like vague. <laughs> right, right, right. But isn't he isn't he also like a, like he's he's like genocidal that guy, right? Yeah. Okay. Does mm-hmm. he stop doing that? Yeah, he had stopped a while ago. Oh, okay, he's but he just condones when he sees genocide. He doesn't say he doesn't make a big fuss. Mm-hmm. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> that shows weird because like it, it alludes to so much shit that I'm like that is just like so dark because <laughs> it was on Nickelodeon. Yeah, because so it was on Nickelodeon, so they're just like Iroh, you went to the spirit realm to attempt to bring your son back to Earth. Oh my and god! He's like, yes, I did, and it's like, oh well, I guess he failed. <laughs> 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 and let me tell you, I shall not be going to the spirit room again anytime <laughs> soon. A real yeah. spooky time. The yeah, a real realm. spooky time. <laughs> Man, I hate going to the damn spirit world. Let me tell you yeah. how much I hate going to the spirit world. The only thing I wor- I hate worse than the spirit world is um, a lodge or perhaps a zone. Uh, I cannot stand being trapped in the zone, dude. I know. <laughs> Man, I hate I hate having to guess what kind of properties the zone will have every time I enter it. <laughs> <laughs> that is ah, the- this is the zone where the sky is a an ocean of blood. <laughs> well, boy, boy, does that just irritate me? Well, that's that movie that we were telling you about, Stalker. How uh-huh. like the movie is literally about these like zones that are unsafe. That like people, it's a Russian film that people people called stalkers have to like take. Uh, travelers through and they can like find incredible things but mm-hmm. they were actually filming it in these like deserted irradiated parts of russia so everyone died but then <laughs> but then the movie was like so popular and so cool that like 
it was pre Chernobyl, and then when Chernobyl exploded, everybody was like, "Now we get to be stalkers for real." And, <laughs> and now, like, there are people in Russia known colloquially as stalkers who will like take you on these like uh, uh, um, unofficial tours through like irradiated zones. <laughs> Russia's fucking sick. I dude. mean, that's probably the only situation where you you don't want the official tour. No, you're abs- like more dangerous. <laughs> yeah, <you're right. laughs> <laughs> they yeah. just lead you to a prison. Yeah, on the unofficial tour, they at least tell you that they're like, yeah, this is the... On the official irradiated tour, they're like, no, it's actually safe. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Please give us your money. <laughs> You're just in Metro Exodus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, man. We gotta, we gotta do some world traveling, but only to, like, shitty, horrible places. Yeah, I would... Dude, I really want to go to, like... Uh... Oh man, I started watching this. Uh, I started watching these shows about Bangkok. Mm-hmm. I started watching this reality show called uh, Lady Boys, uh, Thailand's Third Gender. <laughs> <laughs> and th- hey, Bangkok looks gender like- is a construct. There's not three of them. True, fair. That's fair. <laughs> Except I don't like. No, I I have no horse in this race. <laughs> I, I have no. I mean, dude, the Ladyboy thing was. It's on Tubi, which is my mm-hmm. new favorite place. It's free. It's better than Netflix. Bangkok looks like a shithole, but it's so fucking crazy because there's all these like British expats. I guess they call mm-hmm. them farangs or phalangs or something, and who just go. Oh yeah, at- it's, it's full of white daddies. Yeah, literally, and mm-hmm. and every single one of their stories is just like yeah, he's, they're like look. They also like. Mm-hmm. I'm in murky territory here, but it's weird because every single story is them is like yeah, you know, I went to Thailand like just on a trip. I didn't know what it was all about, and I haven't been able to leave since. <laughs> like, <laughs> like like there is something. And ch- I don't know what it is about lady boys. I don't know what kind of spell these these lady because like uh, maybe it has to be in person because when I'm watching them on camera, I'm like you know God bless them. Truly not for me. Mm-hmm. But this guy is out there. So he like de- this. He was living in Britain. Uh, he had two sons. He left his wife and then like he raised his sons and he moved out to he like went out to Thailand on vacation and wound up getting married. You can't legally mm-hmm. get married to lady boys out there, but like they're like ceremonially married. Um, <laughs> oh, so they don't allow gay marriage, but no, even though like, but like twenty five percent of the country is trans. Mo- I think more. I didn't. <laughs> the, the, I didn't see a single cis woman in this whole show. Like, it, I literally, I'm like, I'm like, are lady boys just fucking like eating like ladies' lunches? Like, like they just <laughs> like like if you ha- like have a pussy in Thailand, and people are like, ugh, what's the point? Like, <laughs> but but he, what's fucking crazy is. So so this guy from Britain, he comes out, he's living with his with his lady boy wife, and that is what they prefer to be called. They prefer to be called lady boys. So I'm not mm-hmm. doing anything bad here. And he's like, and I wa- he's like, I want my son. My son's about to turn 18. I wanted to come out here and, and meet my wife and, and see my life my life out here. And dude, the son gets out there, and within a day, the son has fallen under the spell of the lady boys. <laughs> he's got like five <laughs> lady boys on him. Just like <laughs> his dad his dad is like, We should go to a lady boy bar. I think you'll really enjoy it. <laughs> like he's like, like he's like trying to like He's rooting for his son to fuck a lady boy. It's like in in like the Great Depression where your dad takes you to see a whore on yes. your seventeenth birthday. It's literally like that. And then when, <laughs> and he the kid almost hooks up with a lady boy and then decides that he doesn't. He's like, he's like but the, at the end of the day, I just I don't think that I could. It's not really for me. And then it like cuts to an interview with the dad. He's like, you know, tonight wasn't the night. <laughs> 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 it's fucking crazy. Get back on the horse tomorrow. Get back on the horse tomorrow. You know, I'm. The, I want him to. He literally goes. He goes. You come to Thailand, and you know, you're no longer from Britain. It really expands your horizons. Every 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 hang up that you've had about yourself kind of drifts. It's like I don't know. No judgment whatsoever. But it is weird <laughs> to try to just like plug your son into the Lady Boy Matrix. Yeah. <laughs> just... <laughs> Imagine the mom's feelings about this. I, exactly, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, maybe that's what this is. <laughs> maybe this is, maybe this this is the is big I... payback. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because like at the end, at the end of the at the trip, he's got to go home, and they interview the son. He's got like tears in his eyes. He goes, "It's just, I need to go home. I need to work. I need to work as many hours as I can to get back here." <laughs> it's just like, oh my god. Well, dude. I think a lot of those dudes, like, they're they're rich. They're not like, they're not like hugely wealthy but it's like a guy who he's like okay i have five hundred thousand dollars yeah and if i invest that right i can live off of it for 70 years in south asia oh absolutely oh there Mm. dude there are places like there are places in south asia where you can live on like five u.s dollars a day Mm -hmm. it's insane i mean other than rent i'm there (laughs) no i think that includes rent (laughs) 
No, I mean, I'm sure, but like that's what my life is now, other than rent. Oh, I see what you're utilities. saying. <laughs> I see what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome, dude. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's not bad. You know what I found out today is um well one I found out that the tax penalty for not having health insurance is no longer in effect. It expired the law. Yeah. So I'm probably gonna cancel that health insurance. I think insurance. we have Trump to thank for that. I guess. I don't I think so. I don't know. <laughs> Woo. We'll give it to him. Sure. He gets to, <laughs> it's he been gets, a while since he's had a win. Yeah, he gets, he'll get Yeah, that. We've been pretty hard on him recently. <laughs> <laughs> I know he listens, and I don't want to hurt his feelings too bad. <laughs> I don't know if I can do this anymore. Nah, man, go for it. I, no, I'm just trying, like, t- weirdly with Trump with tax shit, like, if you are making mm-hmm. money independently, uh, his tax laws, I mean, they benefited me greatly when I was mm-hmm. making money from hospital jail. But yeah. it's like, I would, again, I would trade it. Mm-hmm. I would fucking trade it for anything. I mean, the kind of insurance that I'm making right now, or the, the, the kind of insurance that I have, which is uh, the cheapest one that I could get. Get Medi-Cal, dude. No, I can't. Really? Yeah, because they're like, you make too much. And huh. I'm like, but I, I'm on unemployment. And then they like crunch the numbers and I make like $500 more per year. Oh, nice. On unemployment. Yeah. And I'm like, can you take some of it away? And they're like, no. <laughs> yeah, can I just put that towards fucking health care? Yeah. So I'm on this insurance. It's like 110 bucks a month. And what I get for that is if at some point I get smashed by a car mm-hmm. and the surgeries cost more than $6,300, they'll start paying for some of it. Nice. Mm-hmm. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> It's a pretty sweet deal. Do you, they're like, we'll pay for some. You're like, how much? They're like, who's to say? Why yeah. Are you like- I mean, I just, look, I just fucking bought Blue Chews, uh, thanks to Dad Meat for that promo code. Wait, what are they? Uh, I just bought Blue Chews online. Oh, do you have Blue Chews? Yeah. Well, I don't have them yet. Oh, man. Can I borrow it? Can I just try one? Yeah, of course. Oh, my God. I'm going to take some. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I'm going to need those. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to be taking those. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yes! <laughs> if I could just get a, a, a just two blue chew, Brendan, I would mm-hmm. like to. I'll let. I mean, I'll let you know if they they arrive in time. Because the thing about blue chew is the way it literally gets you. I mean, I was taking for a long time just gas station dick pills, mm. and that it has to do with the way that like it does something to your blood flow. You get a high. Your pupils dilate, dude. Really? I remember, dude. I remember th- throwing like three street overlord mm-hmm. pills <laughs> down the hatch and just be like everything looks like a snow globe right now <laughs> hell yeah i i want it to be like red dead like <laughs> hell yes dude <laughs> i want to take a blue chew push in both thumbsticks and just come in slow mo on <laughs> on bay <laughs> <laughs> you literally unload six shots onto Bay and slow up. <laughs> <laughs> you have your hand on top yeah. of your dick like a revolver. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm smacking my balls like yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and then I blow smoke off the tip of it. <laughs> <laughs> then time speeds up and you immediately apologize. You're like, I am so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> There's never been that much cum in my body before, I swear to God. <laughs> yeah, dude, you got to shoot coins out of the air with your cum. <laughs> <laughs> I come to, I'm just at a state fair, like, doing the little BB gun game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you knock over the milk bottles, the carnival bar is like, Jesus Christ, those were glued together. <laughs> <laughs> How the fuck did you do that? Uh, you got it all over the stuff, Bear. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but I'm going to get these blue chews. And I was like, why isn't all medicine like this? I go on a website. I answer several questions. Yeah. Um, they ask if I have ever experienced irregular um, heartbeats. Yeah. I lie. You have to lie. Yeah. Brendan, if there's one thing I know about doc when doctors ask you questions, you clean your record up real nice. Mm-hmm. You gotta look like the perfect candidate. If you wanna get hard, you gotta yeah. embellish a little bit. You think that like all medical scenarios are hospital jail? Yeah. So it's like you're dying and you're like, No, I'm fine. Let me in. They're like, This is the emergency room, sir. <laughs> yeah. Well, the thing is you throw in one because you don't want to be squeaky clean. Mm-hmm. So when you're in hospital jail and they're like, Have you ever taken um, any psychoactive drugs recreational? I'm like, No, sir. He's like, Have you ever smoked? And I'm like, you know what? 
I did used to smoke. They're like, how recently you smoke? I'm like, no, I it's funny. I actually smoked back when I was like, it was before I was 21. When I was 19, I'd smoke every once in a while at a party. They're like, you, they're like, you smoked when you were 19? I'm like, yeah, but it's been a very long time. They're like, that should be okay. <laughs> ah, Nick Oldershaw, the man who smoked several cigarettes. Yeah. In 2000. In 2009. Like yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, now that I say it out loud, it does seem like a I really smoked stupid lie. Three to four cigarettes. I, yeah, I only <laughs> smoked when I was 19. I bet that's not fooling them at all. <laughs> you bet. It's weird to know the age. Yeah, well, no, because like, usually what I say is I go, I, go ah, I was out of high school, but I couldn't buy them legally yet. I'm a little bad, I know. And you, you make it seem like like you're 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 letting out a somewhat sordid detail, so they think that you're being Wait, honest. So when when did you graduate? You're out of high school. Oh, when? Did, oh yeah. yeah can I'm you sorry. buy them different age in Maryland? It would have been, it would have been 2012. I was thinking. Oh, okay. Of, no, it's 21 to buy them. In pretty Maryland? Sure. I'm pretty. Oh, maybe it was fucking 18. In PA, it's 18. I mean, it's 21 everywhere now to buy them. Really? Yeah. They changed that. That was a couple years ago. They passed that law. Hmm. I so maybe 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 it was a, maybe I was old enough. Look, all I know is I act like I'm letting him in on a little bit of a dirty secret. So we established <laughs> some doctor patient trust. So they mm-hmm. think that I've created a genuine bond with them. So that when they ask me if I've ever taken LSD, I go, God no. <laughs> 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 what do I look like to you, a crazy person? <laughs> yeah. And then you go into the facility and you you take the schizophrenia drugs reverse get schizophrenia yeah. and then tell them all about your podcast oh my god dude it is true i for oh my god i forgot that i did that i forgot that yeah dude my my my, my nurse tony was like listening every week i forgot yeah dude i took those i took both times i went in i took drugs that gave me like full-on hallucinations mm-hmm. do you remember when i was messaging you guys and i sent you that like uh like that girl who's doing that joke on colbert about trains i can't even remember what it was because I was having like a weird, it was like I don't I was, think that happened. You sent me other stuff, but I don't remember that. No, no, at this all. was in the group chat. You might not have been awake. I uh-huh. was. I know that Isaac and Robbie remember this because I started having. The, I felt like I was outside of my body, and I was watching this Colbert clip, and I, and she told this joke about trains, and I was like, oh my god, that's so fucking hacky. People have been telling that joke for a thousand years. <laughs> No exaggeration. I thought that, and I literally posted to the channel. I'm like, don't you guys? Isn't this joke like a thousand years old or something? <laughs> and and Robbie and Isaac were like, no. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> what was the joke? I don't. It was something like uh, she said the slogan for trains should be "We'll get you there eventually" or something mm. like that, which is like whatever. But I thought that it was a joke that like. You know, they were telling each other in like the Renaissance. Or something. <laughs> I no, like, I just re- old- I just remember you sending me like <laughs> like a banner ad for Blacked dot com and being like, "What does this mean, Brendan? Jesus Christ! <laughs> what? <laughs> okay." Should we roll the tape nah, back? Nah, we can leave it in. I don't care. <laughs> it's a bonus. <laughs> no, you weren't mad. You just wanted to know what it meant. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> I just remember, like, <laughs> like my phone lighting up at like four a.m. Brendan, I remember this too. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was on one <laughs> when they put me on those anti-schizophrenia medications. Yeah. I was genuinely on one. But yeah, no, I, yeah, it was, it was weird. It really, I mean, like, if you start in the center, it really pushes you off to the left. Yeah, it really does. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, you, <laughs> I just love the, the idea of you under the silver laking, just like porn ads. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I kind of do that. Uh huh. I kind of do that because there's weird narratives that porn ads, but it's weird that like porn gets to be racist because if it wasn't, people would be really mad because it wouldn't really? turn. Yeah, dude, because I think that like porn is such a, your sexuality is such a private and visceral thing that is important to so many people. Oh yeah, you can't cancel Riley Reid. You can't. Well, you can't. Like <laughs> you can't make you can't make porn woke because then people would truly be upset because it's the one area of your life where you're allowed to. We're like indulging in transgression in the transgression of like racial stereotypes or fucking like you know borderline like domestic abuse. It's like no, I, I need that or I can't come. Mm-hmm. And that's very fucking important to people. I um. 
I mean, I don't need that to come. No, no, sure. <laughs> I'm, I'm. That's not me. I'm saying that's me yeah, as yeah. a you know one of these sickos. <laughs> 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 That'd be funny, like if porn got like woke and like, like the porn stars are all like Indian guys. Oh my god! It's just like, oh man, first Comedy Central. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck! <laughs> just limply <clears throat> tugging on your penis to like a morbidly obese woman in a wheelchair. You're like, good for her. Yeah, fuck. <laughs> well, I want, I look this at... woman is reinventing my dick getting hard. Yeah, dude. That's and it's what... like, it's not hard. And it's like, she has changed the game of my dick being hard. <laughs> <laughs> Check out her Colbert set. It made my dick so hard. It, porn isn't just... And if it didn't, it wasn't supposed to. Yeah, porn isn't just about making my dick hard, okay? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of ways that I can appreciate it's porn. It's about creating teachable moments. Just, that's exactly what it is. <laughs> Well, yeah, that's that's the thing. It's like you've never like you've never looked at your porn consumption. And be like, oh, I need to be more well rounded, and because you just fuck, you like what you like, and mm -hmm. and I think that it's completely possible to like MK alter yourself. You know, maybe one day you find yourself neck deep in five lady boys, and your tastes <laughs> begin to change. But <laughs> but maybe what, one day you find yourself watching so much lady boy porn that you start to watch a docu series. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that is what happened. <laughs> but I think that, like, I think that, like, when it comes to sexuality, it's weird because I think that, like, you can come, you can happen upon, I think that, like, so when people talk about, like, well, your sexual preference might actually be influenced by racism, it's like, yeah, that's possible because there are, like, societal standards that, like, skew white or whatever, or, like, skew symmetrical or skew to certain body types. That's fine. That's whatever. But to, like, to force somebody to encounter a crossroads where their sexuality changes feels weird. You know what I mean? Like, if it no, happens naturally... Like what do you mean crossroad well, word changes? Well, so, so like, like to incur, like, to say I like this, like, let's say that, like, I like. So let's just pick a. Let's say that I like a certain type of woman because society's conditioned me to to, to associate mm -hmm. that with like an established standard of beauty, and people and people are pointing to all of these reasons why my preference for that is actually influenced by like systemic racism, and that mm -hmm. might very well be true, but I think it's weird to then be like, you need to force yourself to have different sexual preferences. Do you know what I mean? <clears throat> because I think that, like, your, your sexuality can change in ways that are, like, happenstance. You can, like, surprise yourself. Mm -hmm. But I think to go out, to, like, set up, be like, I'm going to masturbate to as much, to as many different kinds of porn. Even if I don't find the woman attractive, I will jack off to her and condition my brain to find her attractive. Who's, you, who's saying you should... Dude, I'm confused. Well, no, what, because I just read this article about how like sexual preference of like sexual preference of any kind is has to do with like systemic inequality, and it's like okay, we can acknowledge that. Uh, I mean, for me, it's just like when I was younger, I was attracted to mainly white women because I lived in a very white area, didn't know. Yeah, but you were also anyone. Presented... And then when I grew up and left my white high school and you know interacted with other races of people in my life then my taste changed because I was like, oh, now I'm attracted. I'm not just... Such... I feel like you're attracted to what but, you're familiar with, like the kinds of people you grow up around, and then as your horizons yeah. expand and you leave your insular uh, let's community... Let's not make it about race. Let's make it about body type. Are you attracted like women who are like 350 pounds? No. Okay, that would be. that's because like there have been these societal standards of beauty that have been thrust upon you. Uh, I'm, ma I'm, oh. I'm making the argument that the article is making. Okay. Okay. So, so and I would say that we're attracted to women who reflect an image of fertility. So I actually don't even know if that. This is me speaking. I don't even know if that evolutionary biology stuff is true. After mm -hmm. like reading about it more, I think it's kind of silly. Um, but anyway, the point is, I'm reading this article and it's basically scolding people whose sexual like preferences are really narrow, who just they're like, if you have a type, basically, it's not woke. And I'm like, okay, so but the I've seen that as far as as like it's like, oh, if you if you refuse to have sex with men or uh trans women, you're racist. It's like Yeah. <laughs> I've had that argument made to me. And and my and my rebuttal for it was you wouldn't tell a gay guy that he's not having sex with enough women, mm -hmm. right? You know what I mean. Which, whatever. This is more. I water. mean, we would, but they right. wouldn't. I totally. I do it. To, <laughs> I do it to Michael all the time. <laughs> I go, Mike, come on, let's get a little diversity in the bedroom here. Yeah. Let me, um, 
Anyway, the point is, yeah, I mean, but the y- point is, you, the- you look you <laughs> look over someone's sexual history, and you're like, what is this? Friends, right? Exactly. <laughs> but the point is, the, let's the, get some color in there. The implied solution in this article is that you should be forcibly expanding your horizons by like conditioning yourself to be attractive to body types that you don't consider attractive. And I'm like, I guess, man, I just feel like. Mm-hmm. I feel like it's weird to invade somebody's private life that much to like to like keep tabs on the types of people that they're dating and tell them that they need to diversify or else they're bad. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, that's definitely weird. I I mean I I'm not gonna go ahead and say that I don't think any porn is harmful. Like sure, I, of, I of course porn is harmful. Yeah, I mean yeah. in general it's harmful, but then like. Specifically, a lot of porn portrays like consent very nebulously oh, and yeah, like dude. tricking the woman. She's, she fell like... in the dry. She's in the washing machine. She can't get out. <laughs> I do yeah. love that. One like... time I watched this porn um, where like <laughs> it's one of those like uh, stepbrother, stepsister, the classic porns, and the guy like s- sneaks in the shower with her. Yeah, and like puts his dick in her, and she's like. What is that? Dude, it's so... <laughs> there's nothing funnier in the... I'm like, I don't like... It. Like, it's always like, man, the girl was really hot in the thumbnail, but I signed myself up for a lot. <laughs> well, it's it's always like, you watch these videos where, like, the mom gets stuck under the table or in the, dry, or in the washing machine, and, you know, and then her stepson comes up and rapes her, mm-hmm. and she'll go, oh, you're unbelievable. That's, like, <laughs> <laughs> that's the most that she has to say You about scamp. <laughs> I was watching. Um, let's not go into too much detail sure, about this, but I was, I was watching a um, a, a porn that was uh, filmed in the Czech Republic, and they were speaking whatever S- language. This is the one that we talked about. Yeah, this is the one that. You, yeah, uh, I have thoughts about this, but go on. Okay. Um, and uh, you know the guy is like, "Oh, come on, why don't why don't you give us head?" And she's like, uh, "No, I don't want to. This is an abuse." And then like <laughs> smiling, and I'm like. Was this translated weird, yeah. or am I getting the right vibe off this? <laughs> Especially because it's one of those where it's like portrayed as like real. So right. it's like oh weird. Well, now I'm hoping this isn't real. Well, there was a I was it's and then she wasn't in the rest of the video, and I'm like, well, that's weird. <laughs> oh, like she might have walked off, or something was done with her. <laughs> it is the Czech Republic, after all. <laughs> Yeah, it's hostile. Well, it's, yeah, <laughs> yeah. well, you were there was without going into details. There was a specific genre of porn that you were talking about <laughs> on your desktop mm-hmm. that I know. I'm like, I'm like, wait, you watch that? You're like, yeah. And I'm like, but you find, but like, I know that like in real life, you find that act like you kind of like it. You're morally, you're not. It's not a favorite. I mean, we we it's can fucking say that, I, oh, yeah. it's, it's group, group sex, group sex porn, which as a fantasy I enjoy, but it's not something that I would ever want to do in real life. Right, but when you hear, but like, but like. Yeah, I just thought it, you reminded me a little bit of a Republican. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm, like, a, uh, I'm fucking. <laughs> I'm in the bathroom stall at the airport, and I tap my foot, and twelve Czech people come yes. into the stall with me. <laughs> well, what you said, you're like Nick. You don't jack off to porn that depicts something you would never do in real life, and I'm like, no. <laughs> That's if I if I would never do it, I don't have a desire to do it. <laughs> what we, you? Know, <laughs> <laughs> what, so you just play walking simulators? <laughs> you don't okay, want to pick fair, up a gun? Fair point. <laughs> well, no, I do. <laughs> yeah, point. now we're mixing metaphors. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, do you think that I don't want to put on fucking Mario's feather cap and fly through the Mushroom Kingdom? <laughs> I 100% want to do that. I, they won't let me. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <laughs> But yeah. yeah, I was just we mentioned Hostel, and I was I was imagining like um, a version of that movie where we're in it, where they can't catch us because we keep refusing to fuck the women. <laughs> That's really funny. <laughs> All right, what don't don't you want to come back to the to the hostel with us? Like, and we're like, oh uh, no, I saw that movie. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. Re- 
I first heard the word hostile from that movie. So right. when when I found a hostels were real, I was like, yikes! Yeah, they're in. They're like in. I lived at one for like three weeks. Um, they're <laughs> well, in. I've, LA. I've been to one, yeah. but um, yeah, they're like, do you want to come uh, back to the hostel with us? We're like, no, we're gonna go see some stuff from World War Two. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm <laughs> dude. I'm so fucking stupid that like, I saw the movie Hostel before I like heard different word. Uh, the adjective hostile, and I thought that that was like so. Whatever, I'm still. I spelled hostile the adjective like the noun. <laughs> I like wrote that on papers until like my ninth grade English teacher like cur- like there was. I used it like three times in the paper, like trying to sound really fucking like you know. Like I think I just like learned hostility or whatever. <laughs> we were talking about like of mice and men or some shit, and she like crossed everyone out in big like red and was like hostile. <laughs> and, like, <laughs> <laughs> and that's when I realized I was fucking stupid. <laughs> yeah. I would just, I randomly pronounce a word wildly wrong, like a word that I know. Oh, we know. I, think I did it with Antifa earlier. Well, it was, well, the big one is Chimera. How is it? It's Chimera. Chimera? I know, and you push back on this, and I gotta say, I wanna give a shout out to the person in the Discord saying mm-hmm. that he's been keeping a tally of the times that you've mispronounced Chimera. <laughs> God damn it! I think he's like three or something. But. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the worst was um I was I was trying to order a, a PBR, and for some reason this was obviously Here years ago. For some reason I was like, "May I have a popsed?" <laughs> My friends were just like, "What the fuck did you just say?" <laughs> Instead of papsed. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I I, I go popsed, man. <laughs> so I guess I'm fucking stupid too. <laughs> but then you once you learn that you can just say PBR. Mm-hmm. Huge weight off your shoulders. Huge life changer. Absolutely. And then you realize that you can just drink shittier beer with <laughs> a less <laughs> with a less difficult name. <clears throat> yeah, I you, ha- yeah. Then you realize you can just drink Genesee. Comes in a plain white box. <laughs> <laughs> I. It's like twenty eight bucks for a thirty rack. I don't know less than that probably. What happened to me with alcohol? But like, I guess I just can't have it at all anymore. When I get to, when I went to get my hair cut. Mm-hmm. From Daniel's brother, who hooked it up. He, he, what a what the Cabrals are such a fucking cool family, dude. Mm. Um, but we went. He in the back. He's like, I got some Jack and Coke. If you guys want to drink Jack and Coke while I cut Vince's hair, and I had one glass of Jack and Coke. Not only did I get fucked up, but I woke up the next morning feeling like somebody had punched my stomach from the inside. I never understood. Like, what well, you didn't explain. Does Daniel's brother like cut hair as a job? Yes. Or? Oh, okay. he's a barber. Yeah. Okay. I've never understood the like. The cool barber shop where they give you like a whiskey. Dude, yeah, dude, gave me well. It's, they, it's like they weren't open technically, but yeah, yeah. Uh, obviously, yeah. it's like one just take whatever like <laughs> the two dollars or whatever out of my haircut, please. right? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> also, like even when I drank, it's like it's one p.m. Right, it's fucking crazy. And now I'm fucked up and covered in hair. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, the, I forgot how mu- how much hair just like. I'm like, how did this get through my shirt? I like woke up with hair like fucking mm-hmm. all de- like up my shoulders, like all down my back. I'm like, yeah. how did that happen? Dude? That's why you don't get haircuts. Uh, no, I don't know if that's true. Uh, I I think I'm done getting haircuts. That seems bold. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was also like at the barber shop, so we get out the Jack and Coke, and then also in the back they had like all these like vintage nudie mags. They had Playboy, but then they had one magazine that like the the front had been ripped off, so I don't know what it was, mm-hmm. but it was literally just like close ups of women like pulling their pussies apart, just mm-hmm. like just like you can like see. Oh yeah, I remember because you screened, you uh, took a picture of it with your phone, and you sent it to me, and you said, "What does this mean?" Did I do that? Did I send that to you? No. Oh, okay. Because I was taking pictures of it with my phone and sending it to people. I just didn't think that I sent it to you. What are they trying to tell me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Vince, Vince yeah. had it. Vince had this like vintage like uh, um, Kodak viewfinder from like the seventies mm-hmm. that like you like put stuff in it and it blows it up enormously. And so we were like cutting out the spread pussies and then like putting them in the viewfinder, just like holy sh- whoa. <laughs> It was like, it was <laughs> like a crazy. Roy Lichtenstein print. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I was about to fucking bust a nut in the barber shop with all my boys. <laughs> <laughs> Just drunk as shit, jerking off under the barber gate. <laughs> <laughs> While he's cutting my hair. <laughs> I come so hard that he cuts my ear off. <laughs> Just lean back into the scissors. <laughs> Oh, uh, that's the dream death, is you're jerking off 
while getting a haircut, and then when you come, the scissors go straight through your neck. Perfect. Mm-hmm. I, I look good. Yeah. It's that's like, a, that's it's, a good-looking corpse. It's like when you like snip a crab so that it dies humanely. Never done that. Is that what you're supposed to do? I think that's what they say. You're supposed to like cut off like the face of the crab or something. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I have done that, actually. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's right. I mean, but look, <clears throat> it's cruel. They definitely feel the pain. But you yeah. gotta boil a live crab. You gotta get that flavor. Does does cutting? Uh, I'm pretty sure we boil with the face on in my house. But I've seen the faces snipped. I know what you're talking about. Mm. How does that help? Because it dies immediately. I guess so. Or does it just not? Now it just doesn't feel pain on its face. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if I cut off your face, I can't imagine the rest of you. <laughs> my brain's up here, dude. Yeah. Well, I guess if if we cut up your, off your face, it'd be like a reverse RoboCop. Where the hell is a crab's brain? It's got to be somewhere in the ass. Because <laughs> I've had pig brain, and that's very delicious. Right. Um, I didn't know about what what are those called? Like the it's like a virus, but different. And if you get it, there's no trick something. Uh, tr- trick. Tr- but I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Where it's like. It's one of those things that in like Reddit threads, people are like, what is the scariest oh. thing that most people don't know about? Yeah, trichondi something. Yeah, like- something like that, where it's like, oh, well, if you get that, you'll just not sleep again until you die, or whatever. Anyway, you're not supposed to eat animal brains. <laughs> they serve them a lot, though. They do. Um, <laughs> but yeah, people get, people get them from like deer and like uh, hogs. So anyway, I had this pig brain once, and... Uh, I wouldn't say it's dissimilar from like the crab mustard. So that's probably the brain. Well, isn't the crab? That's tr- that's right. That's a good point. Well, that means that they just have like a decentralized brain. The brain is just the brain is it's partly in their ass. Some mm-hmm. of it's in the lungs. That'd be nice. <laughs> yeah, if you could just. Yeah, because I mean, I got all my brain in my head. So if my head goes, it would be nice if like like if if you shot my head off and then I was just. I was still alive, just retarded. Yeah. Well, no, not even that. Like you blow my whole head off, and then I'm I just like can't do math. <laughs> <laughs> like I get around okay. I can like interpret a bus schedule. Yeah, it would be sick to like strategically rearrange your brain. You'll hide it in a different part of your body so that when somebody shoots you in the head, you're like, I, I'm two steps ahead of you. <laughs> <laughs> it was in my shoulder. It was in my shoulder the whole time. <laughs> Shoot you in the shoulder. Ah. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck the most shootable part of my body. <laughs> yeah, man. Mm-hmm. Oh, I want crabs now. Me too. Even though they're definitely they haven't been safe to eat for like the past twenty years. No. Um. Yeah, I was watching The Wire, and I was like, man, I want to eat some of those crabs. They're just eating them in like the the um interrogation room. Yeah. Then I'm like, ah, you can't. You can't. There's no way. That full you're... of oil. Dude, oil and fucking like, well, what they're really full of is like irradiated chicken shit or whatever. Or I guess it's, I guess it's it's more the chickens are like full of like hormones that are toxic, mm-hmm. and that runoff goes into the into the Chesapeake Bay. But that do, it does irradiate the water because the those crabs are cancerous. Like like mm-hmm. eating Maryland crabs. If you do, if you eat enough Maryland crabs in a year, you might as well just like become a chain smoker. Deal. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck it, I'll do both. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I I just I fetishize any food that you eat off of like the table. Yeah, you do love that. Mhm. You 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 just love big, to do a big brown piece of paper with the constraints of society. Yeah, yeah. I You know me. I don't play by rules. <laughs> <laughs> I throw some damn newspaper and I eat a bunch of Boiled corn off of it. It is literally, I mean, eating crabs is torturing yourself because there's no way, you cut your hands and then the crabs are like, I never understood putting Old Bay on crabs because you're not eating the shell, dude. It's just on the shell. It doesn't really touch the meat. So it's just this thing, you cut your fingers and then you like self-flagellate yourself. Yeah, then you just have like salt and like chili pepper. In your cuts. In your cuts. And people are like, isn't this a tradition? (laughs) Yeah, you spend 45 minutes eating, like, you get, like, an ounce of meat, 
Yeah. <laughs> that was why, dude, people who eat crabs love to, like, shit on lobster because, like, oh, it's not nearly as flavorful. It's like, motherfucker, there's, so, like, at least when you, like, crack a lobster. Uh, yeah, at least you can eat one. You get a strip of lobster that you can plop in your mouth. The crabs, you have to, you're foraging through a dead carcass. <laughs> and there's, and, like, like 30% of it you can't eat. Mm -hmm. Like, it's, you just, like, like, the mustard is shit. That's what it is. It's literally. It's like the pancreas or the liver or something. What's the difference? Would you want to eat a dirty pancreas or a liver? Or would you, like a of a person? No, I wouldn't want to eat a person's Do you organs think at all. A crab's pancreas is cleaner than a person's pancreas. Yeah, Brendan, they're eating fucking sand. Sand's pretty clean, I think. It's tiny pieces. Look, of glass. all I know is that if I ate your pancreas, I'd get sick. You might. I've eaten a crab's pancreas, and let me tell you. <laughs> A delectable tree. I wonder how high you would get if you ate my pancreas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got to have some valve somewhere where all the acid you've ever done is. Yeah. Well, I don't know if that... I mean, they say that it's stored in, like, your fat. I don't think it's stored in your spine because that doesn't make any sense. It's a mm -hmm. bone. Um, you can't store things in the bones, Well, it's dude. like the, the spinal column. No, I don't... Right? Know. Like, when they gave you spinal taps, it, they probably took it all out. So it's probably good that they... they it's probably oh. good for you to get one of those every now and then. That's probably true, huh? Mm -hmm. Just I... tap you like a maple tree. <laughs> <laughs> get some of that shit out of there. Yeah, they're selling my spinal fluid to drugs. It's like it's like adrenochrome. Mm -hmm. They're selling it to fucking drug dealers. <laughs> <laughs> but um, man, I you're gonna hate this. I was listening to this Grateful Dead podcast today, go. and they were talking about um this guy bear who uh he was like their sound engineer and also at one point made like half the acid in america oh hell yes dude and i was like whoa like is that how it is that can't be how it is now right uh i mean like when he started it was legal to do that good acid is still like so for a while there was like a drought of like actual good acid mm -hmm. um, because i think it was mainly coming from this illegal lab i want to say in pennsylvania maybe in philadelphia that makes sense cuz my my like music festival going friends from like high school would talk about like research chemicals all the time. Yeah, so there was a there was a drought because these the that what they were making what was either like Hoffman's formula or very close to it LSD twenty five, which is like pure LSD, mm -hmm. and then there was a big bust where like they busted the the acid the 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 house where they were doing this or the acid lab where they were doing this. And then it was really, really hard to get good acid for years. Like I would, you would keep getting like DOX or other research chemicals that would like kind of act like acid, but you would trip way too long mm -hmm. and it would be re really a bad time. But now I haven't done research, but like good acid is back. There's somebody making really good acid again. Maybe it's, a I shouldn't, this is a dangerous conversation. I shouldn't have asked you. Yeah, this. Well, no, I know. I, I almost doxed. <laughs> this is like when I start thinking too much about drinking. Right. And I'm like, I could, drink i bet i could have one beer well look i love the culture of you know uh synthesizing drugs illegally <laughs> <laughs> in an apartment that you're squatting in i think that it's just kind of cool <laughs> no we've got a listener in um we have a listener in uh pa actually who says that he gets pretty pure acid so maybe it's still coming from there i don't know i don't know but i'll tell you what you've convinced me <laughs> i'll i'll start asking around <laughs> <laughs> Nick, please no. Oh, I care about you so much. Look, <laughs> I think that I have at least 10 to 20 more trips in me before the wheels really fall off this wagon. You have told me different. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Look, the thing about me is, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... Nick, have you ever talked to, like, old hippies who did real good acid? Yeah, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, my God. And they're a mess. They're, they're totally... So, my friend's, <laughs> my friend's dad, my friend's dad, um, who lived in, like, lived in the town that I, that I grew up in, and he was always cool with us, like, smoking weed. He was always... He would always, like, share, like, tripping stories with us, and, like... He had Barry had all these crazy fucking stories about like doing LSD, going to see the Grateful Dead, mm -hmm. like the first time he did LSD, and like he had to go work at the gas station, and that was back when like people handed you rolls of quarters, and he couldn't distinguish the quarters from each other. <laughs> he worked a whole shift like that, <laughs> and so and so we're just like we're talking about tripping, and I go, oh yeah. that uh, we've we've fantasized about the '60s before, just like economically, yeah. But I'm like, man, just imagine going to work on acid. Just counting change, oh and, my God. and then like buying a house. 
he did it. <laughs> he was able to do it. And so, and so, and so we're all like, we're all, you know, have, sharing drug stories. And I'm like, Barry, check this out. And I, and I, and I, I tell him like last week I took four tabs of LSD and his joint fell out of his mouth. And he goes, why in God's name would you ever do that? <laughs> <laughs> My friend's dad, uh, he said he did like 40. We're like, What? Yeah. Holy it's shit, like, dude. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> ben O'Brien used to have this really funny joke where he's like, you always come across these like hippies in their 70s who are like, I took 30 hits of LSD in 1976. And you're like, yes, you did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I just remember um, my... One of my really close friends, her parents were like old hippies, and after my Thanksgiving, I would go over to her house and hang out with her family, and like our friends would come over, right. and we'd just be like out on the front porch smoking cigarettes, and these old hippie friends of her dad's would just come out and be like, "It's it's good to see young people smoking, man. Oh man, <laughs> young people stop smoking for a while, and then like just start talking to us about aliens." Yeah, that's my favorite, dude. <laughs> oh my god, one of my one of my favorite times I got too high ever was. Uh, have I told this story before? Like when I worked at the Renaissance Fair. Uh, have I told this? And like, I don't, I don't know. I worked for this guy Johnny Fox, who was mm. like this. He was like a magician of the Renaissance Fair. He was like revered in Maryland. Um, kind of a scummy guy. He had mm. like a fake like museum of oddities. Like, come see the two headed frog. It's like not alive. It's like somebody made that. Uh-huh. Um, and so we were all getting high with him. Uh, it was like second to last week before the fair was closing. So like, he brought out the weed. We're all getting high in in our fucking like little Renfest thing and he started we started talking about like comedians because he didn't like me because i was bad at my job but we started talking about like <laughs> bill, we started talking about bill hicks and dave Chappelle and mm-hmm. like truth tellers which i was really into when i was fucking 18 and yeah so, we used to think comedy was important it's not important at all uh, buy a <laughs> fucking gun um it's <laughs> and so finally i had i had this connection with my boss we started like getting in, into conspiracy theories and he goes he goes have you seen dave Chappelle and oprah talking about how they make black men wear dresses and uh my coworker Y goes what's that all about and Johnny Fox goes, tell him, Nick. And I go, basically, it was all about the systemic feminization of black men in America, where if they thought if any black man was going to be in the media, they needed to feminize him or make him look like, basically, like, take away the black man's power by portraying him as, like, a, like a woman, like, in popular media and making him a joke. And, like, and I basically went on and on and on. And finally, I realized that I had been talking too long, and I stopped. And Johnny Fox goes... Uh, what Nick meant to say was, don't do anything you don't want to do. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> like I, I thought that I was like connecting with this guy, and I just immediately made him hate me by just like, <laughs> just like a colorless pill, like yeah. an imperceptibly colored pill. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> it's like a shiny Pokemon. Yeah. <laughs> that color pill. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. He goes. He, he looked at me really weird, and he turns around. He goes. Basically, they made Dave Chappelle try wear a dress, and he didn't want to wear a dress, so he didn't wear the dress. <laughs> <laughs> I was going on about like this, like MK Ultra experiment. <laughs> 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 oh my god! Yeah, I hate when someone makes me wear a dress, and I have to go to Africa. T- terrible. This happens to me weekly, constantly. <laughs> It's running your finances into the ground <laughs> because they also make you pay for the dress. Which seems, like, Brennan, they make you pay for a wedding dress every week. That's that's absurd. It's absurd. And then you have to go to Africa. Yeah. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and and wear it while I fight in a war yes. with children. Oh, the dress man is back. <laughs> a, a good omen <laughs> that the little dress man is back. I've seen a picture of like. Um, some like African Civil War, a guy's in a wedding dress, like <laughs> charging him, <laughs> like an AK forty seven. That's fucking, dude. I mean, honestly, I respect the showmanship of African wars. You have to. They're just like, well, I'll be nude. Yes. <laughs> and if if I'm not nude, I'll I'll be wearing um the blood of a child. You have to as a hat. Yeah. <laughs> dude, getting number one. Training kids how to use training an army of children how to use AK forty sevens and not only training them how to use it but to be effective with it mm-hmm. is if, if I was a kid and I shot an AK forty seven even at a target I'd start crying. Th- think about the recoil. Mm-hmm. That's a, that's an objectively impressive feat to get these <laughs> kids to kill each other like Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think a lot of the kids even got guns. 
Really? Yeah, I think a lot of it was just like they send the boys into the fray to disorient the enemy. Oh, so kind of like the Civil War, but they're not even giving them <laughs> drums and bugles. No. <laughs> <They're> just... <laughs> yeah, what was the drummer, the bugle boy about? Did uh, they get picked off? Well, I mean, like, I don't know. That's a good question. I mean, back then, war was war was fucking gay. Well, like, I guess... <laughs> you all lined up. Like, you ever watch Barry Lyndon? Like, it's when just... someone actually dies, everyone's like... <gasps> It's so funny. <laughs> well, that well, the whole thing is, I guess that you know, if you see that morale is too high, that's when you take out the drummer boy. <laughs> we got to discourage these troops; they're too energized. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody kill their iPod. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like soldiers weren't good until like World War One. Yeah. Well, even when then... they had to like, they figured out how to like take their humanity. And then they became effective soldiers. <laughs> Until then, it was like, all right, we need to line everybody up and have them shoot at the same time so no one feels like they killed someone. Well, I think we've even talked about this before, but the only reason why we won the Revolutionary War is because we didn't, we like hid behind bushes and stuff. Mm -hmm. And the British people were like, you can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> and then we kept doing it until we won the war. Yeah. Which is, but then for the Civil War, for so, like somehow we just forgot that that worked, and we went back to like honorable ass warfare. <laughs> like, ima like it was yeah. literally just a matter of like if you have, I think it's in that movie Glory. If you have the high ground, you have like the and like in all battles, you have the unquestioned advantage. But like you still just have to fucking take slugs to the chest mm -hmm. in a line. Yeah, I mean, it used to you all be in a duck. It used to all be in a line, so people would show up and watch it like a soccer game. Yeah, dude, with <laughs> picnic blankets and shit. Yeah. <laughs> well, that happened. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Son, daughter, come. We are watching the war today. Well, that happened in in, in the Civil War, like, and it's funny because there's. A sp I wish I could remember what battle it is, but basically, like, there was a, there was tell that a battle was coming to town. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> that's a funny detail. Is like. The battle was scheduled weeks in advance. Yeah, dude. So all these fucking <laughs> like, like, as soon as we get to Georgia, <laughs> <laughs> so all these we're like, gonna walk from Virginia <laughs> to Louisiana, and when we get there, we are going to be so mad. It's it's so funny to imagine like Annabellum South like socialized, just like, come on now, mother, let's <laughs> let's have ourselves a seat and watch the boys go at it. And then just and what apparently what happened was like people like lined up to watch this battle and then like, you know, cannonball like 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 <laughs> the soldiers weren't particularly careful about like <laughs> you know the collateral damage or where they were firing. Mm -hmm. so, so it became it quickly became, oh this is an undignified event. <laughs> Let us retreat. <laughs> Let us retreat to the foyer where we can, <laughs> we can watch from afar. Everyone's drinking gimlets. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, As some kid just gets G-babied. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a fucking stray cannonball. <laughs> I've always thought it's like, to me, the funniest thing about the Civil War is that apparently if you served in it, you had to wear that coat for the rest of your life. No, there's that can't be true. No, like every movie, it's like <laughs> oh, I it's like, see, I see, it's I like 1910, and the guy's just dressed as a confederate. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, dude, did you not buy another coat? <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck, man! The Civil War. I'm pretty sure there's like a John Wayne movie where he's just wearing like a confederate coat. He won't take it off. Yeah, I mean, he's proud of what he did. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> fucking assholes, dude. <laughs> it's also it's also really funny that like their uniforms were I like truthfully, dude. Like it takes me a minute to register which is blue and which is gray. Mm -hmm. Like they they really should have had like different looking uniforms. It's weird that like their uniforms were uniform with each other except for the colors. <laughs> I wonder if there were any mistakes. Yeah, there was there was no even talking about maybe we'll wear a different hat. Right. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> What color will the wool hats be? <laughs> but it's it's July. <laughs> yeah. Now we are all going to wear pea coats like we are on a ship. <laughs> yeah, the, the Civil War literally sucked so much dick. Mm -hmm. That it's so funny to look back at old wars where they were just like throwing shit at the wall. They're oh, just yeah. like, what about? airplanes but 
we'll just shoot at each other with pistols. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Right. <laughs> was that was that that was pre World War One or was that World War One? I? I think it was. I don't even when know. When did they finally mount guns on planes? I want to. S- I know it. It, it wasn't World War One because uh, machine guns were a rarity in World War One. Like only only a couple armies actually had trench guns. Which mm-hmm. if you had fucking trench guns, they would send people over the top into the no man's land. And if the other side had like a had like um automatic firepower, they would make soldiers. This was true. I think. I want to say it was true for the British Army. It might have been true for the Australian Army as well. Mm-hmm. They would make them eject the clips out of their rifles because that's fucking expensive, dude. Uh-huh. Because they didn't want to have to retrieve the ammunition from the no man's land, so they would just like they would basically just like send bodies uh, over the over the top, just like as of like, well, what we can't we can't do nothing. <laughs> We've got to send some, it's some like a bunch of child boys. soldiers. Yeah, pretty much. Just take <laughs> off your clothes and sprint at the enemy. Yeah, those are expensive clothes. <laughs> we are going to need those clothes later. <laughs> it's fucking goddamn war is so retarded. <laughs> Have you ever read a farewell to arms? No. Uh, I probably mentioned it on here before because it's one of the only books I've read in the last uh, five years. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's just so funny how casual like war was. <laughs> like at one point he loses his pistol, so he just goes to a store to buy a new one because he knows that if he shows up back at war without it, he'll be in trouble. Oh fuck! <laughs> <laughs> I hate when I get written up at war. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 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 yeah, I hate when I'm at war and I'm like, oh, my manager is going to be so mad. They're going to take this out of my check. Yeah, it's, a, it's like, you're like, your general's like, three more of these and we'll have to fire you from war. And you're like, really? You just like throw your boots in a ditch, <laughs> lose your hat. You're like, whoops. <laughs> I'm pretty sure as a cop, like now, you could lose your gun like multiple times before yeah. anyone's even going to like write it down. They're just like, all right, go get one from the locker. <laughs> <laughs> go, get, go get one from, and it's literally just a pile of guns. <laughs> There's just haphazard guns. <laughs> Everybody has like five guns when they're like, give me your badge and gun, and then they wink. <laughs> <laughs> There's another thing where like, um, like the, the house they're in is getting like mortared and they're all just like drinking wine. Oh, is that in Fair World Arms? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, pre-World War II, it was so hard to die in a war. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm sure that's not true, but it sure feels like I it. mean, it's kind of... I don't know. I'd have to look at the casualties. I feel like that's probably not true. But um, <laughs> it it does seem like people were more cavalier. I wonder what that was. I wonder, like, what the... I mean, I... is our generation soft? Was Roger Sterling right? Yeah. I mean, like, if... Of, like, all the dudes we know our age, like, if most of us had to serve in a war, we would be fucked. I think that we also, like, reckon with our mortality, and maybe it's because we have more time to actually consider it, and because, like, there's been this emphasis on, like, uh, mental health and, like, and, like, being cognizant. Like, I, I feel like we, I feel like we reckon with, like, the absurdity of existence more than people of previous generations, where, like, it's like, if you die, that's just... Or it's, it's, yeah, I, the absurdity of existence. I hate getting shot in war and then remembering cold pockets. Well, d- so the well, the thing is, <laughs> what I mean is like I'm pretty sure that like the way that like like when you get shot in World War II, the way that like those guys are suddenly like grappling with the fact that like they're dying, like in those final moments when they're being pumped full of morphine and they're like begging for their mothers, mm-hmm. and they realize that it was all for naught. That's how we feel all the time. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that we're all that guy in Saving Private Ryan. Yeah. Because, I mean, like, we'd refuse to go. Flat out. Because you, <laughs> yeah. you couldn't trick me into thinking that it was my job <laughs> to do that. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Plus, like, I mean, back then, like, like, you know, like, World War II, I could see different. But, like, sure. before that, it's like, oh, who are we going to war with? The other race? Well, it's 1890, and we're all racist, so sounds easy. <laughs> That's true. Well, but dude, even World War II, when people talk about World War II being like, I would have fought in World War II, it was a just war. When we got into what we didn't know about the concentration camps when we got into World War II. Like, it was lit- like, it, there wasn't even that aspect of, like... Yeah, uh, we got 9-11, or we, like... Or we... I mean, we yes. Kinda, <laughs> we kind of... Well, we yeah, oh, absolutely. You're right, you're right, it is 9-11. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, wait, wait. 
They did it. All right, okay. let's move. Woo! <laughs> I was thinking this morning, I was like, why the fuck would George Bush finish reading that book? Right, it's insane. Yeah. It's in, why, like. Like, if, if it was not planned, oh, I need to go be the president immediately. Right away. Yeah, yeah, we've been attacked. A plane mm. fucking flew into the Twin Towers. It's fucking crazy. Mm-hmm. He finished the book. What if he just wanted to know what? how it ended? Yeah, what if it was like a good book? <laughs> Hop on Pop. <laughs> well, what happens? Does Pop get mad? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's mm. I it's it's really hard. I'm trying to be really rational, even thinking about fucking. It's also mm. crazy that George Bush is like a fucking good guy now, who's calling, who's like calling for like racial harmony in America and saying that like the Department of Homeland Security uh, sending these fucking, like, unmarked goons to all these... Like, mm-hmm. basically, the pushback against Trump from establishment Republicans is pissing me off so much because these are tactics that Republicans and Democrats... Obama did this shit, have employed for years. Like, did you see that Joe Biden called Trump the first racist president? You fucking idiot. You, you, you Andrew are so, Jackson. Ra- what? <laughs> Most of them. Yeah. Literally all of them. About, yeah, Bush. <laughs> Dude, I'll fuck I'll say Obama. Yeah, Obama. He fucking he blew up <laughs> hospitals and weddings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not you're not supposed to do that shit. Man, I today cuz like this was the first time that I had to like try to get insurance outside of like my job. Yeah. I was like, man, the Affordable Care Act is the only thing Obama did that was good, and it fucking sucks. It sucks because it's a half measure. Mm-hmm. It's not that good, dude. No. It just makes it illegal to not have the shitty health insurance. Right, and dude, that's like the weird... That seems to be like the Democrats' tactic for everything, which is like, ensure human rights by punishing people who can't afford them. So what it really yeah. does is like... It, I don't know. I mean, I mean, it's basically... It's like, Democrats are like, well, I don't think that people should be killed. And then Republicans are like, well, I think 100% of people should be killed. And then the Democrats are like, all right, we'll compromise. 85% of people will be killed. Yeah, we own, like, <laughs> it's, it's like, look, we both agree that people should be killed. It's just we have different, like, I think only the poorest people should be killed. <laughs> That's Democrats. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Fuck, oh my God, dude. It, it, it's been really hard. I've been super, like, I think that I've just been spiraling because I've been so fucking logged on, like, following... Oh, you gotta log off. This, no, I don't. I don't think that's true anymore, man. All right. Well, I guess I'm glad that you're logged on, so I don't have to be. So I can just info dump you. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. like it literally. I mean, I'm literally just like, I've just been like walking around aimlessly, just like looking at footage of these fucking. I got a buddy who lives in Baltimore, and like they've been like fl- like Baltimore is a city where there have been largely peaceful protests. There hasn't been that much destruction of property, which is what the occupation of these Department of Homeland Security forces are apparently there to prevent, because mm-hmm. um, that's all this country gives a fuck about. But th- Trump has mainly been sending them to cities with Democratic mayors and governors, and the politicians in those cities are protesting and telling him they're like we don't want these forces here get them out and they refuse to do it the head of the department of homeland security was on fox news saying that their troops are out there to make proactive arrests so arrests against people who have pre-crime free crime dude but larry hogan was one of the few governors who i think actually asked the national guard to come in (laughs) this 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 i hope this motherfucker gets cancer again like, he came into my restaurant when I worked at O'Brien's, mm. and I ref- everybody got a picture with him, and I fucking walked out. I refused to get a picture with that motherfucker. But they've just, they're, they've just been like, where my buddy lives over in uh, Hamden, they've been flying choppers over his neighborhood nonstop. Nonstop, in the middle of the day, for hours, just fucking surveying the city. Damn. Who wants that? Like, anyway. <sighs> Sorry. I've been logged on, dude. <laughs> man, I'm so mad that I'm too mentally ill to have a gun. I know, man. It was really sad. I was really excited to... Because I, I was also banking on you being too mentally ill to have a gun, but that just meant that I got to have custody of the gun. Yeah, yeah. For sure. <laughs> I would get weekends with the gun. Oh, I have supervised weekends with the gun. Yeah, like two a month. Yeah, if I see you try to raise it towards your head, I'm like, Brendan, no! I'm yeah, like tapping yeah. on the glass. We meet a, in a Wendy's parking lot and you give me the gun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're like in the drive-thru, you throw it back to me from your car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I should... I, I can't have a gun. I do too many bits. I have, um, now that I have, like, a lot of money in unemployment, I'm thinking about maybe, well, I gotta check with Isaac. 
I have a feeling that Long might be okay with me having a gun. I would just I just want to I want to have mm. one. I want to exercise that right. I really do. I don't know why. I mean, I do I know would, why. Um, because I feel powerless. I don't think that we're going to like I don't think society is going to like collapse to the point of martial law within the next year. But we have but there's martial law in Portland. I mean, there there's straight up martial law in Portland right now. I mean, it's not going to get to the point where like you personally need to have a gun for a while. So I would wait until they're less expensive. Cuz right now you're going to go into a store, they're going to sell you some weird caliber of like <laughs> They're going to be like, oh, uh, yeah, a gun. We have um, a 10 millimeter 1911. Right. You're going to be like, uh, okay. Sure. You yeah. sell a lot of numbers. <laughs> yeah, if I like... add all those numbers up, that's a big number. So is that how, like, how much damage it does? <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any incendiary rounds? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, how much XP yeah. do I get when I shoot these? Yeah, yeah. Now, where do you keep the plasmids? <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, I just, I want a gun. I just, mm -hmm. I genuinely want to, and I want to exercise the right in like a responsible way, but I want to exercise my right mm -hmm. to be... You want to go halves on a gun and you can keep it at your house? Yeah, let's talk about that, actually. <laughs> In a little bit. I, I'm just kidding. I can't do that. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> I, I would like to. I, I've even talked with Bay about it. I'm like, I think that, like, I want to, like, you know, I think that I think, we should own yeah. guns. I think I will own a gun someday. Yeah. But not soon. Yeah. Because when I, when I thought that it was time... Ooh boy, was I on one! Yeah, you 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 had you had a little bit of a funny moment. When you, uh, <laughs> well, that was a bit of a gap. That was kind of a blooper on your part, Brendan. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of my classic bloopers. <laughs> it would be so funny to have like a uh, sell of VHS of like uh, Brendan Crick bloopers, <laughs> and it just looks like a library with so yeah. many tapes. <laughs> You're watching, you're like, who got this footage of me? <laughs> it's like when you watch, like, Gandhi on VHS, you're like, all right, now insert tape five. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, I used to love those things, dude. I, there was nothing I loved more than holding the Titanic VHS. Mm -hmm. I think it was, like, two or three tapes. So thick. Oh, yeah. Felt like a toy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, just a... I love having a big item on the shelf. Yes. I remember when I was a kid, my mom at Ollie, she got me like a a box set of all the James Bond novels paperback. It was mm -hmm. like this long. Every one of those books is bad. Terrible. But, and I read the first one. And I was like, this sucks. Mm -hmm. But damn, did they look good on the shelf there. I, dude, I would have, I mean, that, I would used to buy records for the art. I had so many records were like, I bought, and it was a gamble, 50-50. Sometimes it'd be sick. There's mm -hmm. nothing better than when you buy a record because it has sick art, and then you put it on, and it's awesome, and you're like, oh, yes. Mm -hmm. The flip side of that is a lot of bands know that they have a shitty album, so they ball out on getting really good art made, and you, they trick people like me. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? <laughs> but they trick someone like you like 20 years later. Right, that's true. They're not even getting money for it. <laughs> Yeah, I'm buying used records. That's right. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> you ever go to a record store and there's like a lot of contemporary music in the used section? You're like, oh, somebody needed to make rent. Yeah. That somebody's me. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that was like, yeah, that was yeah. that, yeah. When I would when I would sell my records to fucking uh, going underground, they'd be like, yeah, man, please come. They're, they're like, we don't usually get stuff like this in. I'm like. I know there's a good. I shouldn't be selling you this. There's a really <laughs> good reason for that. Yeah, I should really sell you sell one of these a week online right. instead of coming in years. every day with like a bit like Tom. Dude, I remember one time like it was after I got kicked out of hospital jail, and Tom was like, "Do you want to go to McDonald's?" I was like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." And then like he came to pick me up, and I brought like I had a stack of records like up to my chest, <laughs> and I go, "Hey, can we make a stop at the record store really quick?" And he goes, "Why?" And I'm like, "So I can buy McDonald's." <laughs> 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 You're like a drug dealer who always wears a chain yep. so that you can pawn it for bail. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> now I have only one record that Bay sent to me. Aw. Extra- oh, and she dropped a pretty penny on it, too. And when she sent it to me, it's so funny. Like, I got it in the mail. And I was like, oh my god, Bay, you didn't tell me that you were getting me that you were getting me this record. And she goes, Yeah, please don't sell it. And I was like, Hi, why, why do you think that I would sell it? <laughs> she goes, Because when I she goes, Because when we started talking, you had a collection of three hundred records and now you have none. <laughs> I was like, all right, that's fair enough. <laughs> yeah, you can't sell the sentimental one. No. Mm-hmm. Not at all. <laughs> Aren't Bay gifts nice? Yeah. You're like, wow, I'm people. I didn't know I was people. Yeah, that's what you're like. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that I was people. <laughs> huh, what's that like? Uh, honestly, there's a lot to grapple with. <laughs> I think that's why I retreat into drugs so much. <laughs> it's true. I, that's because I want, when I do that, because I want to feel less like people. Mm-hmm. Oh, speaking of retreating into drugs, mm-hmm. I want to talk about how Far Cry 5 is Coward Hour the game. Oh, please. Dude. There's a mission where you you trip and then kill a woman with BPD. Jesus Christ. There are so many <laughs> thematic parallels. Well, they start I was telling you they started doing that in Far Cry 4 where like mm-hmm. in Far Cry 4 the game forces you to take drugs so many times. And like not only does it force you to take drugs it's like okay, take these drugs, now kill 100 enemies. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this one like just every now and then you get dosed. Yeah, and then this this um this like Coachella looking white woman grabs your hand in like with like a sundress and takes you through a field like the Instagram and, shit. Yes. Oh my fucking exactly god! Exactly like that, and she's like, "I know what you've heard about me that I'm a liar, that I'm a manipulator, but it's not true. What? And only you will understand. Oh my god! How <laughs> cathartic was this for you, dude? <laughs> well, I think they knew that like. It's going to be a rough screenshot for you to just, like, shoot a, like, pretty blonde woman in the head. Right. So when... But you... it has to be a pretty blonde woman. There's, yeah, like, yeah. We won't budge on that. <laughs> <laughs> so when you when you finally have your boss battle with her, she's it's, like, a dream, basically, and there's no blood, and she, like, disappears in smoke. Yeah, that's what they do in the other one, too. Okay, mm. okay, okay. It's like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see it. You are really tapping into a bunch of stuff. Yeah. I'm not going to go into specifics, but um, so the girl, she like her name is, is Faith Seed, but then she reveals that like that's not her real name. Right. And her previous name, wouldn't you know it, was no. a very specific name to my... <laughs> yes. Oh, my God, dude. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, it's just this game. Brendan, did you have an out of body experience? Did you did you did your whole world just like zoom out? Like I look at Steam and I like don't have any games. <laughs> <laughs> oh but my then like fucking god. Like I swear this this I want to know who wrote this like part of the game cuz it's such like a hateful um like white woman villain character. Mm-hmm. Where it's um, <laughs> like when you finally beat her, then she starts playing the victim, and she's like, "You don't understand. I was young when they took me into this cult." Right. And you're like, "You're gun shaking, like, uh, no, it's your fault." Oh my god, <laughs> like, uh, dude! Yeah, that's the, like this game. You kill a million people, and then like when you kill anyone with a name, it tries to make you feel bad, and it like right. kind of does. <laughs> really. That's very interesting. Mm-hmm. That's very psychological. It is very strange. Video games are getting weird. They're getting really fucking weird, dude. Mm-hmm. I, like, and I mean, this is a game where I have a, a sidekick who's a bear named Cheeseburger, and then I'm just like grappling with like whether this woman who was abused as a teen deserves her punishment now. Jesus Christ! <laughs> well, you like it's like it, video, video games are progressing. Like I feel like video games are about to we're about to see like an era of excess in video games. Like both, like the, people have really been like. There was this game critic John Messi and I were talking about this. He's a listener of the podcast. I'm in mm-hmm. a group chat with him and Tim. We're like there was this like game critic who uh, made the fair assertion that games are like too long. He just tweeted video games are too long, and then like all of these fucking developers and voice actors all flipped a shit and like responded to him told him he was like a fucking bad all this shit like i think that video games are getting a little bit too lofty with with what kind of role they think that they're playing Mm -hmm. do you know what i mean like yeah that's like a little that sounds a little bit like whenever like i see there's more and more a trend now of like 
this game explores the reality of mental illness in a way that you never would have. And I'm just like, yeah, I don't know. Just make Mario jump on stuff, dude. <laughs> That's how I feel. Like I, I got like Hellblade. Oh, whatever. Sasuna. Yeah, I got it. It replicates. I got it on sale, and it was like, play this game with headphones. And I'm like, all right, why? And then I, I play it, and 10 seconds in, I'm like, no. Yeah, because it's absolutely not. It's supposed no. to emulate schizophrenia. Yeah, and well, I'm like, oh, I'm not coming out of this without schizophrenia. Let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just like, I had, I, video games, I don't know. I'm, be, I'm becoming like very. I had this thought the other day. I tweeted this, but it's like it's so funny now that like when you think about like Red Dead Redemption or whatever, like that that game was made what over the course of like two years by like shaking, crying developers who were like losing their minds trying to get like you know make sure that the the grass looks good when it blows in the wind, mm -hmm. just so that I can go boring after <laughs> like thirty minutes. Yeah, it's also it's like you couldn't you couldn't hire more. Uh, developers when GTA 5 is the most profitable entertainment of all time. It's why they won't make a new one mm -hmm. because they don't want to stop. And this is three where gens. Dude, this is where I'm just like, uh, yeah, you know, fuck dude, video games are fucking canceled, dude. Fuck these people. <sighs> At least I don't like those kinds of games. Like like any game that has like an online component is probably already something I'm not interested in. Yeah, I mean, yes. Sometimes it, it's just it's weird that they've tricked so many people into like it's weird that they've tricked like the whole world mm -hmm. into thinking that Red Dead Redemption is a good game or it's like not GTA, fun at all. It's dude, G honestly, like Red Dead, I think would be fun if the controls weren't fucking awful. Right, if 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 they didn't commit to that full fully realistic animation cycle, so that like before yeah. your next input registers, it has to complete the animation because this emphasis on reality. Is so fucking stupid and not why I play a video game. And, and but they've tricked. I remember being bereft when I realized that you <laughs> loot people in real time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like, oh no. Yeah, dude. But they've but they've tricked people into thinking that that's good, and that that's what so they want. Bad. Like GTA is not that fucking fun, dude. Every yeah. Far Cry, the GTA stuff, is... I'm having more fun with this. Far Cry is more fun than GTA, objectively. Yeah. The other thing I like about this game is that as you do the side shit, like, every... it's The area is, like, three uh, areas all controlled by a lieutenant, and the way that you advance the story is by, like, collecting resistance points. Right. And everything you do adds to the points, so even if you fuck around and do side missions, eventually you're going to tip over the next line and then they come and make you do a mission. Interesting. So it's like you, because I I will get bogged down in all the the bullshit. So yeah. it, it's like it forces me to actually finish the game. Interesting. Yeah, that was my problem. When I played Far Cry Four, I loved doing the optional missions so much that like before I was ten percent done with the story, I had every like best gun, every special ability, and so then the game wasn't fun at all. Yeah, yeah. And this is where like it goes. But I think that we've talked about this before. Every game is designed for, like, the biggest addict. Well, it's also just, like, American developers are stupid because they think that, like, the way that you create variety in a game is by giving players freedom of choice, and that creates the opposite of variety because then the player will just do... Like, if you give a player multiple methods for completing a mission, he won't try them all. He'll just try the one that he likes. The way that you create variety in a game is by removal of abilities at selective times, like in Zelda or whatever. Yeah, where yeah. They, where, like, you can only, where there are, like, there are dungeons where you have to use a specific item to complete specific puzzles. That's how you... That's a game. That's how you, like, f force... Anyway. Yeah, like, with this, I'm, I'm just like, why would I use the bow and arrow? I'll put a silencer on the gun. Why would? You, why the fuck is it in the game? But, th but there's so much of that redundant shit in American games, and I don't know why people think that that's good. People are so bad. Let me tell you something. I'm so good at playing. I'm so good at enjoying video games. Nobody mm -hmm. enjoys video games better than me. You're I the understand. best. Everyone knows that. I'm probably the best at playing video games. Ah, whatever. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It just. I just like. I think that I just get bummed out when I see like people consuming shit that's really bad on a large scale and not wanting better for themselves. Whether it's games or movies or fucking McDonald's. Yeah. Like I mean, the fact that they're trying to sell me things. With in, with real money for a one player game, like I get DLC, mm -hmm. but like I'm playing a game and it's like, hey, do you want to buy this gun for the single player game for ten dollars? Someone should drive their car through like the CEO's house. What is the I, like? Does it shoot people like the other guns? Uh, like I'm not paying for something in a game 
unless it like unless it's like a new game plus, unless it like adds a new mission or like new characters or some shit. Well, I bought I I wanted a Desert Eagle because I wanted to be able to uh, shoot the engine blocks out of cars. And uh, nice. (laughs) If you get armored piercing bullets for the fifty cal, you can just like shoot through walls. Nice. It's so sick. Like I'm like, oh, I could I I could crawl through the trees. Disable the alarm, go around and disable the other alarm, or I could shoot through both alarms. Right. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah, but it's like okay, so you can either wait until the end of the game where you have so much money that you can get that gun right before the game ends and not really be able to have that much fun with it, which is what I did. Mm-hmm. Or you could buy four hundred silver bars. <sighs> that this gaming. How does everything suck now? And it literally is just like, it all comes back to fucking capitalism. Like, it's just, that's just gross capitalism in a fucking game that you paid, what, full price for, or was it off? I paid like nine bucks for this game. Oh, okay. Well, but it was, but at one point it was $60. It was. Like, at one point it was a full priced game. At one point it was more than a full price game because, uh, like, I always play these games like two years after they come out Mm -hmm. and you get like the extra shit with it. Uh, but if if you wanted all the guns to be like even in the game from the start, you were paying eighty bucks. Ugh. Yeah, man, I fucking hate video games. <laughs> <laughs> there are some that are fun. I've just had to like let let myself like if I get bored of a game, just it's okay. Just just don't just, pick it up again. Well, I just I I keep falling back into like where like I think I want to play these new games or like a new game will like catch my eye and I'm like oh that looks fun and then like what I have all these games on my Switch now, and the I wish that I had known that the only game that I wanted to play was the Street Fighter Anniversary Collection, <laughs> full of games from fucking thirty years ago that are like that are better than most sixty dollar games that I'm paying for now. Like I like mm-hmm. I will load that thing up nine times out of ten when I turn my Switch on. <laughs> It yeah. did just, uh, it shook me to my core playing Far Cry 5 when the logo of the evil Christian cult <laughs> is almost exactly our logo. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> and then I'm, I'm flying a helicopter and there's just a big sword painted into the side of a mountain. I'm like, what the fuck is oh, going on? <laughs> what have we done? <laughs> what have I manifested? It's like when the Joker movie came out and he's talking about how people are rude. <laughs> I'm just like... <laughs> Did we write this? <laughs> Did Todd Phillips hear us talking too loud one day on Melrose <laughs> Avenue? <laughs> oh, fuck. Mm. Um, well, do you want to take a break? We'll yeah, yeah. For, well, uh... that's an hour and a half, so if we feel like it, we can start after all that stuff that we said in the beginning about uh, race and pornography. Oh, I mean, I thought that was an interesting conversation. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, I don't care. I was like, "Do you not? Were you not okay with it?" I was afraid. I was like, mm. "I don't think we said anything." I was just talking about a weird fucking article that I read. Oh, okay, all right. If you, I just, I knew that that type of conversation was the only time we've ever gotten a DM being like, "Uh, guys." <laughs> well, I don't care. Also, that girl still listened to the podcast afterwards, which was so funny. <laughs> but I think she's in our Discord now. Well, great. <laughs> I lo- look. I like. Whatever, man. That's this is this is behind a paywall. Yeah, all that stuff. I just th- I just think it's weird. It's something. It's it's something that's interesting. That I I just think, and I'm all for like trying to be cognizant of like your implicit biases and like systemic uh, inequality and all this shit. But it, but I do still think there's a point where like it's like all right, how much are you gonna invade somebody's like personal life and like you know tell them how to be good? Yeah. Hey, you're being horny wrong. Yeah, you're being horny wrong, dude. <laughs> hey, um, I watched you being horny, and it, I loved it. Great stuff. I do have some notes. <laughs> All right, let's take a break. Knock, knock, open up. It's me, the crazy, shady, faded fucker. So rock the Jesus. 
See you later, G. make a baby, lead her on in peace Only time I give a fuck is for, for my, my own, own release. release That's why I own these streets Straight up, portfolio, showing growth Fuck a pay cut, up. yeah you know I stay slut Catch me in the spot, looping up for the self-suck Oh fuck, I busted already, I'm coming bucket so heavy fuck My dream so of cream heavy. coming steady, now my mouth open, I'm ready I'm talking solo heavy petting on a Friday, Friday night. night Not talking bashing the bishop, more like that tug is delight I'm it's taking all the time delight. I need to do it just right Got my candles in the fishnets cause it's on tonight Oh that's right, it's time to fillet, no need to debate Me, I suck until I go Ooh, we and spray my white pee pee. I got that ski ski ski.